There was recently a list compiled listing roundabouts with the highest number of crashes in Michigan. Nine of the top 10 are in Metro Detroit. You know, it seems like everybody has an opinion on this mm -hmm. and it begs the question, are they better or are they safer? Nick Monticelli joins us live from a roundabout in Oakland County tonight with the reason behind the rise in roundabouts. Hey, Nick. Hey, good evening to both of you. We're standing in a roundabout at West Hamlin in South Livernois in Rochester Hills. Photographer Justin has been here even longer than I have, and people have actually been yelling at him thinking that he's in a turn lane. We're not. We're actually in the median, but there have been cars honking, people stopping, people breaking when they're not supposed to. Many people just don't understand roundabouts. Here's the thing, though. That's OK, according to the road commissions. Yes, they see more accidents, but in their lines, wait for this. That's a good thing. Do you or do you not like roundabouts? I don't. Ask any driver on the streets of Metro Detroit. Don't like them. Why not? Uh, people don't know how to drive through them. And you're going to get a mixed reaction on roundabouts. A recent list showed roundabouts with the most number of crashes. Nine of the top 10 are here. Number one, Orchard Lake at 14 Mile Road in Farmington Hills with 164 crashes. Number two, 18 and a half mile in Van Dyke and Sterling Heights with 153 crashes just in 2018. So if there are so many accidents in roundabouts, why have them? For answers, we went to the Oakland County Road Commission, which has the most roundabouts in the entire state. Here, they say the first answer is traffic capacity. A roundabout increases capacity 30 to 50 percent without widening the road, meaning less congestion for you. The second reason, believe it or not, is safety. But are they really that much safer? Here's what we found. Yes, there are a lot of accidents, but property damage, minor damage, disabling damage, and sometimes injuries. But fatal accidents? Very few. In fact, road commissions know there's going to be fender benders, and they're okay with that. Those are almost always just, you know, damage to the vehicle, not to the people, and we'll take that over a fatality or, or an incapacitating injury any day of the week. There have been dozens of studies on roundabout safety, feds, insurance groups, and more doing the research, showing in roundabouts, a 75% reduction in serious injury crashes and a 90% reduction in fatal crashes. So again, fender benders and minor accidents are going to happen in roundabouts. There's no way to stop that, but it's better than somebody dying here. But they do want to reduce the number of accidents and to do that, that's kind of a backwards thought process, like installing these fences to reduce the visibility. If they can't see, they slow down till they get up to the edge. It forces them to slow down, and then they're moving through the roundabout at the proper speed. Another strange yet effective fix, smaller lanes. Narrowing the lanes seems counterintuitive, but it forces people to be more aware of the lanes. And being aware of the lanes, we're told, is key. Watch for the signs on which lane goes where, pick that lane, and then stay in it. And also, wait for a gap. Yield to the traffic already in that roundabout. If everybody did just those two simple things, we could virtually eliminate all the fender benders that we see in roundabouts. And that here is the goal. So let me put a, a finer point on why fatal crashes drop significantly. Because if you look at a roundabout, it eliminates head-on collisions. It's virtually impossible to happen. That's why roundabouts are much, much safer. Yeah, there's side swipes, yeah, there's fender benders, but again, that is a good thing. Karen, I know it's interesting. This has actually been really fun to look at all the numbers and all of this, but you know, here's the bottom line this. It is safer, and it's really interesting to look at the strange things I've been doing. I mean, adding a fence to decrease visibility actually helps. That is, that is really crazy. I, I just feel like people still get anxious and we do have to continue to remind them all of these rules. So, but the stats don't lie. It's true. All right. Thank you, Nick. We appreciate it. Yeah, good insight. That blocking the visibility was interesting. I bet a lot of things there people didn't really realize, but uh, nobody likes to stop fully anyway there at a regular mm -mm. stop sign, right, Bernie? Are you good exactly. At those mm -hmm. Are you good?